Hi guys, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing well and I'm just going to get straight into the video because I've been told about my lung intros. Obviously I'm in a public space and there may be background noise but hopefully there won't be. So what I want to talk about in this video is something that is really a part of the work that I do which is around coercive relationships, coercive control and emotional abuse and the reason I'm talking about it is because if you're familiar with a BBC drama which has been running for a number of years I think it's one of the longest running TV dramas on um, BBC which is Casualty there was um, <clears throat> an episode this week where it like touched on the subject of coercive control and because Casualty is one of those programs which does address some of the issues which maybe don't always get talked about domestic violence and coercive control is what it touched on on Saturday. So in the episode there was two of the main characters, they're called Jacob is the male nurse and you've got Tina is the female nurse. So I've made some notes so I will be looking down just so that I can keep track of what I wanted to get across in this video. So coercive control is something that is now been known by the government and recognised as a form of abuse it's a form of control where although there's no physical abuse although it's not similar to emotional abuse even though the two overlap it's where someone is very coercive and it's almost like they use partly gaslighting but also partly a way of control and manipulation to keep the person staying with them even though they're treating them badly so in this situation Jacob the male nurse he had suffered two losses in his life he'd split up with his long-term partner and she had then left the department of the hospital, so she'd completely left, but he'd also lost his mother. So everyone was aware that he was in a vulnerable stage in his life. Um, he was still continuing to work, but he was obviously um, affected by what had happened. He then met a female nurse who came onto the department and her name was Tina, and initially they were just friends. They then started spending more and more time together and they entered into, it wasn't quite a relationship, but she, straight away saw it as a relationship. The first red flag was that she started making hints about them moving in together. Now he wasn't ready for this and he sort of made it clear that he wasn't sure and the moment he used the words that he wasn't sure about things or it was going too fast she started to use forms of manipulation by saying you know you don't love me, you don't care about me, um, let's just end this then, you're not serious about me. So that was the first red flag. He then thought, oh, I don't want to lose this person and continuously told her that he loved her, he didn't want to lose her and therefore he gave her his key to his house and they moved in together. Once they moved in, she was then saying, oh, I need to buy some stuff to, to make the house more so that it's um, both of our houses. I don't want it to look as though it just belongs to you. So she then asked him for his credit card and then overspent a massive amount. So this was another red flag, but also another form of manipulation. She clearly knows that the wage that he's on isn't like a massive wage, but she didn't care. She spent all of his money. When he saw the statement, he questioned her on it. And once again, she turned it around and this time used emotional blackmail by saying, you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you criticizing me? I didn't do it on purpose. I just wanted the house to look nice for us. Um, why are you being so mean and tight with your money? I didn't think you were like this. So she's using a form of making him feel bad when it's his credit card and she's done something wrong. So after that happened, he was considering, do I really want to be in this relationship? And there was periods of time where it showed that he was thinking, what do I do? What are my choices? What are my options? He was then in a situation with a patient where he was sharing some of his insecurities from childhood. He was saying he used to be overweight and the patient was suffering with um, weight problems. So he was sharing some of his deepest, deepest, darkest secrets about how he used to feel about himself. Now, Tina, was listening, she was eavesdropping and she used that information against him so she didn't know, he wasn't aware that she heard all of this and so he was just saying to him maybe it's because of your childhood, maybe it's because of your past and then he opened up to her and then she literally used that against him as a weakness so everything she was doing wrong to him it was well maybe that's because of what you've been through so there was a scene then where she had thrown an object at him, it had hit him in his head and it caused bleeding, so it caused an injury to his head. Now at this point he was seriously saying to her, you have got some problems, you need to work on them. But she turned it around again and said, you know, 
you're the one that is causing me to do this, you're the issue. Now what's interesting is, when we think of usually abusive relationships, the focus is usually on the female being the victim, but also we don't typically see like a person such as Jacob, you know, he's tall, he's um, handsome, he could probably get lots of women, he's got a great personality, he has a lot going for him. We don't identify with that person as a victim and the thing for me even though I've been working with domestic abuse for numbers of years even for me it sort of taught me something because I would never have probably placed him as someone that they would use this storyline for and it just goes to show what they're trying to show is anyone can be a victim of this type of abuse so after she threw the object at him she was then accusing him of flirting with colleagues she has been it's the way that it's done is very clever because it's showing that there's subtle things that someone can do which then make you doubt yourself and that's exactly what he was doing. His main aim was to keep this person happy, was to let her know that he loved her, was to d get rid of some of her insecurities. So he was doing everything but her main aim was I need to control this person so no matter what he was doing to try to get rid of those insecurities it hadn't ma had no difference on her so this in this week's episode what happened was he obviously they were moving in together at this stage there was lots of accusations of him flirting with other women and all this sort of thing and then the final thing was that she threw his mother's necklace away so this was significant because he has only got a photo of his mother and he's also got a necklace which meant a lot and she called it oh it's just a bit of old tat she knew it was sentimental to him but what she done is, is turned it around to say to him why are you making a big deal about this and she almost said it as though oh you're a mama's boy you know why are you crying over your mum's necklace and whatever and then she picked up a photo of him of his mother that was framed and smashed it now when she smashed the photo the glass went into his leg so he had an injury on his leg and also his head again so all it showed in the following scene towards the end was that he was on the sofa being nursed by her after she's caused the injury saying you know I bet you hate me now and um, why do you want to be with me and I get so angry and I really love you and, and then he was kind of trying to pacify her again so he was not addressing the behavior and this is the key thing to think about in these relationships Coercive control, you never, the person feels like they can't address the behaviour because the person is being manipulative by saying, you know, it's me, I'm at fault, I'm the one who's angry. They're being insecure, so the, the victim is trying to make them feel less secure, but they're also blaming the victim, so the victim feels that they're wrong. So in this scene, after all that had happened, she nursed him back to good health, and then towards the end, I was thinking, what's this, what's going to happen? How's this going to pan out? And in the final scene, he literally got on his knees and asked her to marry him. So the reason he proposed to her was because his feeling was that this is going to, he said to her, I'm going to show you how much I love you by proposing to you. You mean everything to me. So this is when for me, my heart almost kind of like started fluttering because I'm thinking, not in a good way. I can see the journey now and I can see the complexity of this whole thing. Someone has manipulated you, they've been verbally abusive, they've been physically abusive, they've thrown things away that are important to you, they've made you look bad in front of your colleagues, that was another thing she would do, they've isolated you from people, they've made you feel like you doubt yourself and that you're doing wrong and then at the end of it you've turned it around to get a marriage proposal out of the person so that shows the level of manipulation that is involved in these type of relationships so all i would say to people is if you notice red flags this is the key thing for you to do as a person is to get out early when the red flags are appearing go from there don't wait until things become um, really bad. I know it's easier said than done but I can really see with these scenes in this uh, TV program just the intensity of it and, and although I've read about it, I've done training, I've worked with people, it's never been as clear as it was like shown so I just felt I wanted to explore it. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave your comments, to like, to share and to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.